this video we will discuss about peripheral blood smear this is the part second of the video in the first part we discussed how to prepare the smear and how to stain it now in this video we will discuss about the examination we will discuss only about the examination of the rbcs in the next video we will discuss about the examination of the wbcs so whenever you are examining a blood smear we examine under three uh, powers of the light microscope we examine under 10x 40x and the 100x okay this uh, this is the examination routinely which is followed now examination will be done firstly we will examine the rbcs the wbcs the platelets and the organisms like malaria filaria these all so now going to firstly rbcs the rbcs normally uh, before knowing the abnormal rbc we should know about what is the normal rbcs it has a size of around 7 to 8 microns it is round has regular margins and has a central pallor now this central pallor is around one third the diameter of the rbcs so like uh, this much is the central pallor that is the one third part this is a uh, lightly stained area now the size of rbcs is important because when we will be discussing the low size like microcytic rbcs therefore we should know about the normal size the normal size is approximately the size of the nucleus of the small lymphocyte so in the smear you will have some small lymphocytes so the nucleus of it okay only the nucleus of it is corresponding to the size of the rbc normally the rbc is described if it is normal it is described as normocytic and normochromic that means the size is normal cytic means size the size is normal and normochromic means the staining of that rbc is normal so normocytic normochromic now going to when we are discussing the abnormalities of the rbc we will discuss the abnormalities in the form of size okay if the size is abnormal the shape is different the staining uh, characteristics are different there are some rbc inclusions which are present and lastly the red cell arrangement it is if it is different now going to firstly the size now size of rbc uh, if it is less it is known as microcytes okay uh, if it is less it is known as microcytes and if it is more it is known as macrocytes okay and in macrocyte also you have some round macrocytes and sometimes macro ovellocyte they are certainly certainly oval in shape okay these are known as macro ovellocytes now uh, what are the conditions now, whenever discussing these abnormalities we will discuss what are the conditions in which these abnormalities are seen now we are all you see microcytes okay microcytes are seen in mainly first and foremost very important is iron deficiency anemia the anemia it presents as microcytic hypochromic anemia okay so microcytes are very much present in iron deficiency anemia in sideroblastic anemia in anemia of chronic disorders and in thalassemia so to remember it you can remember by the mnemonic sita okay S stands for sideroblastic anemia, then iron deficiency anemia, thalassemia, and anemia of chronic disorders. Then going to macrocytes. Now macrocytes they can be either round or macroovellocytes. Now macroovellocytes are very much seen in megaloblastic anemia. So in deficiency of B12 and folic acid. So you will see megaloblastic anemia, and in there you will see. Uh, macrovellocytes other causes can be liver disease alcoholism hypothyroidism these are the causes of macrocytes now in this picture you can see this is the small lymphocyte okay and there are some rbcs which are smaller than this okay so this one if you take example so they are smaller okay and also uh, later on we we'll discuss the staining the central pallor has also increased so this is the example of microcytic hypochromic anemia now uh, going to the macrocytic now here again you have a small lymphocyte so whenever you are uh, seeing and you have to classify you will see the small lymphocyte and then you will see the size of the rbcs so here this rbc is slightly larger in size has slightly oval shape so here also you can see this rbc has that uh, almost oval shape so like this so this is macrovellocyte 
now this is seen in ida that is iron deficiency anemia microcytic and this is seen in b12 deficiency that is your megaloblastic anemia now going to the uh, there can be a dimorphic anemia also now if the patient has a nutritional anemia patient is not eating properly so patient will have deficiency of both b12 and folic acid so the both populations can be seen so this is known as dimorphic anemia if you see uh, dual population variation in the rbc cell size okay is known as an isocytosis now going to the staining part so staining part we already discussed that one third should be the paler area if the it is more than one third okay this is known as hypochromia now hypochromia is again seen in the same causes so that were microcytes that is the same sideroblastic anemia iron deficiency anemia thalassemia and anemia of chronic disorders now going to the various shapes now shapes if there is increased variation in the shape of rbcs it is known as poikilocytosis now first shape which we are going to discuss is the sickle cell now sickle cell is seen in sickle cell anemia so in this picture you can see in this uh, pbs you can see these cells okay so you can see the rbcs they have just gone from round shape and they have been formed like crescent okay okay so the both the edges will be sharp okay so this is known as sickle cell this is seen in sickle cell anemia now going to spherocytes in spherocytes what is the difference from the normal rbc the spherocyte will be slightly smaller in size and will have no central pallor so here you can see many rbc such as this you can see this this they are very they are small in size but they are not microcytes because they have no central pallor present they have a they are very small and they have no central pallor so this is these are spherocytes these are seen in firstly hereditary spherocytosis and autoimmune hemolytic anemia whenever we are going to give a diagnosis like spherocytes so we have to always correlate with the history of the patient so always history of the patient is asked whether the patient has a history of hereditary spherocytosis or then only we get to conclusion now schistocytes schistocytes are fragmented rbcs they are appear as helmet okay so here you can see they get appear as a helmet or triangle shape so here you can see this appears as a helmet okay so like this so like this it can be like this it's a fragmented rbcs now fragmented rbcs can be artifact also if the sample is not correctly preserved so they can be present as artifact also however they are if they are increased in number okay they can be seen in microangiopathic hemolytic anemia in severe burns and in cardiac wall prosthesis so therefore always the history of the patient is very important and always to reconfirm it a repeat sample can also be taken going to target cells now target cells as the name appears has a targetoid appearance has a bull's eye appearance has a bull's eye appearance so bull's eye means when you are hitting with the arrow so there is a center target which you have to hit with the arrow so this is the appearance which is seen in target cells these target cells are very characteristics of thalassemia okay they can be seen in sickle cell disease also in splenectomy also but very characteristically they are seen in thalassemia uh this is uh, actually due to why the target toid appearance is there due to irregular condensation of hemoglobin therefore the hemoglobin condenses in the center so this is the appearance why because of irregular condensation of the hemoglobin then going to bur cell or akinocytes now this is can be again uh, uh, due to any artifactual causes or in uremia but what it is this is regularly place small projections over the rbcs so over the rbcs if the projections are very regular so this is bur cell uh, one more cell is there which we will discuss is acanthocyte so to differentiate you will see the difference what is there now second is acanthocyte now acanthocyte what is there in the bur cell the projections were regular and they were very small 
ओके बट इन अकेन टू साइड द प्रोजेक्शंस दे आर इरेगुलरली प्लेस एंड दे आर शार्प प्रोजेक्शंस दिस इज अकेंथो साइड एंड दिस इज सीन इन लिवर डिजीज और इन स्प्लिनेक्टमी सो दीज आर अकेंथो साइड एंड दे आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द बर सेल गोइंग टू अगेन नाउ टीयर ड्रॉप सेल दो एज द नेम्स डे वेन देर इज अ ड्रॉप यू सी ड्रॉप लाइक दिस दिस इज टीयर ड्रॉप सो इन दिस यू कैन सी मल्टीपल टीयर ड्रॉप सेल्स Okay, so these tear drop cells, they are very characteristic of myelofibrosis, but they can be artifact also. So again, history of the patient is important, and you should uh, rule out any causes in which there is can be artifactual also. So myelofibrosis, if you see many many tear drop cell in an older person, myelofibrosis is a cause of tear drop cells. It is also known as dacrocytes. Then you have blister cells. Now blister cells. uh in this what happens is when you will study the g6pd uh, deficiency okay uh, i have a video on g6pd deficiency also so you will understand better there so in g6pd deficiency what happens is the hemoglobin gets condensed away from the uh, cell membrane so you will have the cell and you will have this will be stained okay and this part will be not stained okay so this part this is known as the blister cell so you can see over here half uh, around half of the portion is stained and half is not stained so these are the blister cells these are seen in only g6pd deficiency then you have bite cells now uh, i told about blister cells okay in g6pd deficiency so when uh, these deformed uh, rbcs go into spleen they are uh, the splenic macrophages take a bite of it okay and therefore how it appears like a bite cell so like this okay so like a bite is taken of small portion of the cytoplasm has been removed by the splenic macrophages now this is again characteristic of g6pd deficiency only going to the red cell inclusions we discussed about the variety of the shapes okay now what are inclusion inclusions are something which we will see in the rbc itself okay in the rbc cytoplasm what all you will see so these are the inclusions which are present so what are the inclusions when you, you will study whole of the hematology you will come across in various diseases various inclusions are present so like basophilic stippling is there hovel jolly bodies are there cabet ring are there now these three are seen in b12 deficiency so when you will study the b12 deficiency the megaloblastic anemia you will come across basophilic stippling hovel jolly bodies and cabo rings and then you have pappenheimer bodies and hinz bodies so hinz bodies are seen in g6pd deficiency now going to firstly your basophilic stippling so what is basophilic stippling it is actually aggregate of ribosomes so here in this picture you can see there are some rbcs okay there are some rbcs which have very fine 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 dots present okay so these fine dots which are present in the rbcs this is known as basophilic stippling okay so this is known as basophilic stippling so this is seen in i told you megaloblastic anemia other causes can be your thalassemia very importantly lead poisoning also you see this in liver disease so these two causes are very important the megaloblastic anemia and the lead poisoning now going to the hovel jolly bodies so hovel jolly bodies appear as a round structure okay like a small round purplish structure this is actually nuclear remnant of the rbcs this is again seen in megaloblastic anemia splenectomy and hemolytic anemia going to cabot ring cabot ring appears as a ring inside the rbcs so if you will see it can appear as a circular ring ring very thin delicate ring or it can also appear as a figure of eight structure also so here in this diagram you can see this rbcs it has a slight rim of the cabot ring so this is seen in again your lead poisoning and in megaloblastic anemia so in megaloblastic anemia you have all the three inclusion you have basophilic stippling you have hovel jolly bodies and you have cabot rings now going to the pappenheimer bodies pappenheimer bodies are nothing but iron granules which are present in the red blood cells so to stain the iron in the rbcs we use a stain which is known as pearls prussian blue so this will be positive with the pearls prussian blue 
it is seen in sideroblastic anemia and in splenectomy then you have polychromatophils now rbc's inclusions are this much only but going to other type of rbc's which you can see the immature rbc forms which can be seen in the uh, peripheral blood smear so uh, if you are aware there are something known as reticulocyte when the rbc's from the nucleated rbc goes towards the peripheral smear okay from the bone marrow the cells from the bone marrow the nrbc's go into the peripheral smear there is a immature form which is present there is reticulocytes in between okay there are nrbc's then there are reticulocytes then there are mature rbc's okay so reticulocytes uh, in the peripheral blood smear they appear as polychromatophils that means they have will have different chrome uh, color to the rbc so here you can see this rbc is a polychromatophil it has a bluish gray tint to it it is slightly larger than that now these are due to remnants of the rna which is present if you will do the methylene blue staining okay you will see that these are reticulocytes only and the reticulocyte count will be also high so polychromatophils are nothing but reticulocytes on simple lishman staining they will be increased in hemolytic anemia so in whatever condition the bone marrow is producing more rbc's the polychromatophils will be increased so like in hemolytic anemia there is increased breakdown of the rbc's so there will be increased production of rbc's also so in hemolytic anemia the polychromatophils will increase secondly following therapy of nutritional anemia so there is nutritional anemia of the person we are giving b12 to the person okay now the patient is responding so what will happen the bone marrow will try to generate more rbc's okay same in iron deficiency also so if the patient is responding to therapy also sometimes the polychromatophils can be seen on the smear then nucleated rbc's can also be seen normally the nucleated rbc's are very less seen okay uh, they can be seen in such a condition like in hemolytic anemia when there is increased breakdown and hemolytic disease of the newborn now going to the red cell arrangement okay so how the cells are arranged normally how the rbc arranges rbc is just touch each other okay this is how they are, they are arranged but there is one uh, condition known as roulette formation roulette formation here the rbc's will appear as a stack of coin okay so like here you can see this is roulette formation now this again can be artifactual but if you rule out all the causes of artifactual roulette formation it is very importantly seen in plasma cell dyscrasias such as multiple myeloma such as waldenstrom microglobulinemia so in these the roulette formation is important so if you get a person 70 years uh, male presents with the pbs and you have roulette formation in that okay so uh, one thing which you should uh, know of that is multiple myeloma should be ruled out then his auto agglutination this is the last rbc arrangement we are talking about in this the rbc's will be clumped together these are not arranged as a stack of coin okay it is different from your uh, rule formation in rule formation it was just ek ke upar ek so they are uh, arranged as a stack of coins but over here in auto agglutination they are clumped together okay and this is seen in cold agglutinin disease in auto agglutination diseases okay so in cold agglutinin disease the warm uh, antibody diseases so these are seen over there so this was all about the examination of the rbc's on the peripheral blood smear do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these type of videos ask any queries in the comment box thanks for watching this video